So you got this nagging hip pain that just won't go away. You may feel like you've tried all the stretches and all the exercises that exist on the internet, but still nothing. What the F is going on? Keep watching fellow hipster because in this video, I'll explain what you might be doing wrong and more importantly, I'll share what you can do instead to finally start getting some much needed pain relief. Hey, I'm Max from Max Resnick Movement, your last stop for pain-free hips. If you landed on this video, I'm going to safely assume two things. One, you have hip pain that has lasted for more than one month. Two, you've tried numerous exercises on the affected hip. In this video, I'm going to recommend you try something different. And it might seem strange at first, but don't knock it till you try it. In part one of this video, I'll tell you what this advice is and why it works. And in part two of the video, I'll share two example exercises that you can try today that follow the principles we go over in this video. Okay, so what is this secret advice that I've been hinting at? Well, to be honest, it's really nothing that revolutionary. What I suggest is that you zoom out and target other areas of the body. Many of us in chronic hip pain put too much emphasis on the exact area that hurts. We pull on an area that's already so tense and inflamed. The area that hurts is rarely where the problem is. Instead, it's other load-bearing joints that need to step up to put the body into better balance. This includes the opposite hip, the ankles, the shoulders, the pelvis, the spine, and all the other load-bearing joints in the body. Nothing in the body works in isolation. And to improve the way our hips feel, we need to improve how our entire body moves. With these principles in mind, let's work in a couple exercises that bring balance and function back to the whole body. And pay attention to how you feel after performing these exercises. Take a little walk around the room, bend forward, squat, and pay attention to what you notice. In this exercise, you're gonna get on your knees. I would recommend putting a pad on the ground, and you're gonna place your nose, your chest, your pelvis, your knees, your quads, all against the wall. Essentially, you want your full body touching the wall. Then you're gonna make a knuckle with your thumbs pointing out and place your arms directly above you. So this is position one, and we're gonna hold this for one minute. Notice how my big toes are touching. My feet are a little dirty, so don't look at it for too long. And from there, we don't want to shrug the neck too much, right? We want those, we don't want to be too aggressive with pulling the shoulders down and back yet, but just cue them not to, to shrug up too much. And breathe, trying to keep those elbows straight. They're probably going to want to bend when you first start doing them, this exercise. So do your best to keep those elbows as straight as, as you can. And not trying breathing notice if you're breathing erratically or if that breath picks up we want to do our best to keep a calm steady breath and that's one minute now we're going to do a y position and we're going to hold this position for a minute as well so all the same cues apply here make sure those elbows stay straight make sure you're in this position try to maybe pull the scapula a little bit closer together, right? So pull those shoulder blades down and back a little bit because as we get into these other positions, they do tend to want to shrug even more. Pay attention to whether that pelvis is starting to strip away from the wall, right? Or even the quads or the chest. Really keep every so every few seconds maybe really imagine yourself going going back to the wall. If you feel like you're peeling off, come even closer to the wall mindful of the breath. If this is getting very, very difficult for you, take a break. Don't be a hero. Shouldn't be going into a territory of nine or 10 in difficulty here. But you know, if it's, we do want it to be challenging. So if it's a six or seven effort, that's good. Now, last and most difficult position, we're gonna make a T here and we're gonna place our arms 
directly to the sides, right? We're going to keep those elbows straight. And here I want you to try to really pull those shoulder blades together a little bit more because this position is, they're definitely going to try to round and go forward. So really peel them together, pull them together. Keep that nose, chest, pelvis, quads, knees touching the wall. Be mindful if they're coming off and relax the breath. We got a little bit of time here left. See if you can finish, but if it's really, really challenging, just take a break. And then the next time you do this exercise, try to do a little longer. But if you're still in it, let's really pull those shoulder blades together. Really finish strong here. Keep those elbows straight and awesome job today. If you're enjoying this video, hit that like button, smack that subscribe button. It goes a long way for me to keep bringing you quality content. In this exercise, we're going to be standing up and we're going to place our hands on our low back. We're going to pull the elbows and shoulders back while keeping the feet hip width apart and pointing straight. We're then going to contract the quads and hinge forward. What I'm checking there is to make sure the body weight is evenly distributed between the front of my foot and my heel. So you want both the back and the front of the foot to take your body weight. From here, we're going to hold this for a minute. Let's make sure that those knees stay straight, those quads stay contracted, and you're actively pulling back your elbows towards your shoulders. The neck is not hyperextended, so look directly in front of you, which will be the ground, and that should keep your neck in a good position. Pay attention to your breath. Is your breath getting erratic and super heavy and difficult? If so, then this probably tells you that this exercise is pretty challenging. And this exercise is more difficult than it looks, so just be mindful of that. Pulling the elbows back, keeping the quads engaged, and imagining like there's a straight line from the ankle bone to the hip bone. We have about five seconds left here. Let's finish strong. And great job. You could come up whenever you're ready. Let's talk about programming. Although these exercises might feel challenging for you right now, they aren't overly taxing on the nervous system. This means you can safely do these exercises every day or every other day without the risk of overtraining. For timing in the wall clock, I recommend you do one minute in each direction. And for the pullback hinge, I recommend doing a full hold for two minutes. If you want to learn more exercises that heal the hips through this full body approach, sign up for my free hip starter course today. It's a great way to jumpstart your recovery out of chronic hip pain. I'll drop a link in the description box below in case you're interested. That's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Happy hips.